in this video, I want to talk about forgiveness, but not forgiveness for the wrongdoing of other people, but actually forgiveness for yourself. It is important to forgive other people for their wrongdoings. What I believe is even more important is forgiveness for ourselves. And you might be thinking, well, I don't have anything that I should be forgiving myself for. Why would I want to forgive myself? And it surprised me during a meditation that I have been doing lately, how self-forgiveness is often so overlooked. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. I am Iris Sirianni. I am a self-love coach and a spiritual mentor. So as a self-love coach, one would think that I have done a lot of forgiveness of others and perhaps even forgiveness of myself. But recently I discovered that I had a lot more forgiving of self that I had to do. And so I wanted to share that with you. This realization came as a result of a six phase meditation that I have been practicing uh, the meditation was created by Vishan Lakiani. He is the founder of Mind Valley, and I started to read his book and then started to do his meditation in the Mind Valley app. And part of the six phase meditation includes a piece on forgiveness. So, what he has you do during the meditation is to think of somebody that has hurt you and bring that person's image to the forefront of your mind. And so he leads you through this process of forgiveness. And I have actually done quite a bit of forgiveness, as I mentioned. So what I decided to do was bring an image of myself in front of me. And I was actually quite amazed at what started to come up for me and all of the areas that I still needed to forgive myself for. Self-forgiveness is part of a healing journey and it's part of returning to the essence of who you are and truly knowing who you are. And so you might be asking, how is it that I would need to forgive myself? What do I need to forgive myself for? And that's a really good question, but they're all based on the experiences that you've had and the level of awareness that you had at the time. So here's an example. I know of a young woman who worked in healthcare. She was a nurse. She was also in a highly toxic, abusive, narcissistic relationship. And if you've ever experienced this type of relationship, I think that you will really understand where this woman was coming from. So not only was she constantly verbally assaulted with affirmations of how shitty of a nurse she was and how she couldn't be trusted and how she was always messing up and how it is that that she even felt that she even belonged in the nursing profession and she should go get a serving job as well and she probably wouldn't be good at that when you're in these types of highly toxic relationship where there's so much verbal abuse a lot of times physical abuse as well and the gaslighting and the confusion and the stress and the distress that comes as part of the assault with the entire arsenal that is available to a narcissist to use against other people. It's just overwhelming. And so what happened was she needed, she needed to work, even though she felt over the course of time that she was useless, that she wasn't good at her job, it actually started to seep into her mind and her stress and her distress became to such a heightened state, but she still had to work. So in order to be able to calm herself down, she would smoke weed and then she would go to work high and she felt such extreme guilt and shame over this. 
and it stayed with her for a very long time. I'm really happy to report that she's out of that relationship and she is well into her healing journey and into forgiving herself because what she had to forgive herself for was being first of all was smoking weed and going to work high and she had extreme guilt and shame around that and she wanted to keep that hidden and i don't believe that she is the only person like that but she had to forgive herself for her actions at the time given the circumstances because what she was trying to do was merely survive that's one example where self-forgiveness is required sometimes it's not as extreme as this there are other examples of this as well so for some the self-forgiveness stems from abuse way back in our childhood maybe in our family dynamic in some way there may have been verbal abuse there may have been sexual abuse there may have been physical abuse there may have been abandonment there could have been all kinds of things maybe there was none of that but maybe you witnessed parents fighting constantly or maybe there was some type of a substance abuse within the the family dynamic it could virtually be anything it can even be bullying at any point in your life any form of abuse strips away your self-worth and how you see yourself and so we then play out the identity of who we think we are to not only protect ourselves, but also survive and to feel loved and accepted and that we belong. So we may put up walls, we may push people away, we may say really hurtful things to other people, we may do things that have a tremendous impact on the lives of other people. But here's the important thing that I want you to remember on this healing journey and the journey of self-forgiveness is that I have a strong belief that everybody is doing the very best they can with the level of self-awareness that they have. If you are on your healing journey and you are reflecting back on things that you did and you feel guilt and you feel shame around that or you feel unworthiness around that, that's where the self-forgiveness comes. And I want you to remember that when you were acting in a certain way, where when you were saying things in a hurtful way, when you were having these life experiences where you were out of alignment with who you truly are, I want you to understand and forgive yourself because what you were doing was trying to feel safe in the world. You were trying to protect yourself and you were trying to survive. And we don't always have the awareness. Hindsight is twenty twenty, and we don't always have the awareness of things while we're going through things. Here's another example. Not all of the examples of self-forgiveness are so traumatic and dramatic. Sometimes we can find ourselves in relationships or situationships where we intuitively know that somebody isn't the right person for us, even though that person is a really good person. And there are red flags maybe and they're usually yellow flags and we can feel them and but we ignore them and we ignore them and we are out of our own alignment with this person and we ignore them because we want to feel that sense of love we want to be able to give love and we want to be able to receive love and we want to feel safe with that person and know that we've got somebody great on our side. But when we intuitively know that we are out of alignment with somebody, what we do is we abandon ourselves for the sake of feeling love. And once you have the awareness of this, you can look back with, from a different lens and see, okay, well, that's what I did, but I didn't have the awareness that I was doing that. 
at the time. So self-forgiveness really is an important part of your self-love journey, of your healing journey. So wherever you are on this journey, include self-forgiveness in your process and always know that you are doing the best you can. You are working so hard or you have been working so hard to protect yourself to survive in the world, to feel safe in the world, to feel loved. You are not broken. I just did a reel about this. You are not broken. You do not need to fix yourself. I think that that is the most important lesson that came into my awareness just recently, that we are not broken. We don't need to fix ourselves. God created us in perfection. And it's only our perspective or the beliefs that we have about ourselves that would have us believe that we are anything other than amazing and perfect and so worthy and so good enough. So you are phenomenal. And another person that is really phenomenal, I just want to share this last little bit here is Naila Abdullah is a an exceptional woman. She's here on YouTube and she deals specifically with toxic narcissistic abusive relationship recovery. I'm going to leave her link in the description box below if you're interested in checking out her channel. If you are interested in working with me, if you're interested in exploring how a coaching relationship with me could help you, you can book a complimentary conversation with me. And that's what it is. It's a conversation and we talk all about you. So if this is something that you're interested in, I've also left a link below where you can book that call with me. And I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, please comment and like and share and subscribe. And until the next video, take good care, love yourself, forgive yourself, and I will see you really soon.